So in this week, it really kind of drills down into um, really into subqueries um, and subqueries can. I feel like subqueries is kind of a step back to where like there's a lot of conceptual um, kind of stuff, which I know we've kind of already seen. So because there's, there's a couple different names for them. Um, and so what I thought might be helpful is we can run through the exercises. Um, so we're going to do a few, if not most of these exercises together. Um, and, and as we kind of hit them, cause I, I like these exercises cause they kind of talk about, um, they use some of the nomenclature and, and so we can kind of use some of that to kind of explain as we go. So the, the first question is, and I guess maybe, yeah, let's just, let's just start. We can kind of go along. So it says construct a query against the film table that uses a filter condition with a non-correlated subquery. So the key word in this one is non-correlated. And essentially what that means is, is a correlated subquery means that it's connected to the outer query somehow. So when, when we say we want a non-correlated subquery, basically it can run all by itself. That's how I know something is non-correlated. If I can copy it and run it, um, it should be able to run by itself. So um, let's see if we can stack our windows here nicely. Uh, okay. Non-correlated. So I'm going to just, uh, let's use Sakila here. Sakila. Run that. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do is it says to construct uh, a query against the film table. So I kind of like to kind of build as we go here. So I'm just going to say from film, right? Make sure it runs. I like to always kind of like do these incremental runs just to make sure everything's working. Um, but we needed to use a filter condition with a non-correlated subquery. And so what that means to me, filter condition means where, and we need to use a non-correlated -sub subquery to find the category table to find all the action films where the category name is equal to action. So if we look inside this film table, um, I don't see really anything that's in that doesn't that has like category or anything like don't see it we could check over here um check inside film look in the columns and i don't see any sort of category thing so if we take a look in here we have two two other tables category and which has a name and then we also have film category so what we can look for is is, is eventually we're going to have to join up to this film category because what we want to do is find all of the action films. So from film, I'm going to join this with a left joining and we're going to look at film category. I'm just going to call that FC and we're going to do that on F.film ID is equal to FC.film ID. All right, so I'm going to back out this filter here real quick. Make sure we can run this. And there we go. And now you can see for each film now we have a category ID. So now that we have that category ID, now we can say where and a subquery because we want to use a where filter with a subquery. So we're going to say where um, category ID, and really it's the category ID from film category. So where fc.category id and this is where we have to do some sort of equals or in or something along those lines um but before i do that i kind of want to see what what i'm going to get so i'm going to come back up here and and write my subquery first so if i look at everything in category category I can see here that there's not any duplicates. It's just the category ID and the name, so action. So what I'm gonna do is, um, if I wanted to select the action one, I would say where name is equal to action. Right, 
And so now we get the the rows here. So now we're going to say, okay, so, but really from this, all we really need is our category ID. So we're just going to select the category ID from category where name is equal to action. So then we get our one record. So in this case, an equal sign is going to work because we're returning one row, one value. And which is another word for a scalar subquery, meaning one row, one value, basically a single value. We return single value and we can just kind of plug our subquery here. Now, the way I like to kind of do my subqueries is I like to kind of put my brackets up and then in kind of indent these. So put that there, copy and paste. And then again, I, like I said, I like to kind of tab this in just like that. So let's take a look. We're selecting everything again. So if we take a look at this, um, we can see that the category ID is all one, which is great. And yeah, so this should give us all the films that are an action movie. Um, and the reason this is non-correlated, because again, I can take this subquery and I could paste it here and run it and it works. So if the, if the subquery will run in isolation from the parent or the outer query, then, then we know that it's non-correlated. So this is number one. All right, question number two. So question number two is kind of a build off of number one. So it says rework this exercise, but we're going to use uh, a correlated subquery. So we're going to use a correlated subquery um, against the category and film category tables to achieve the same result. So again, in this case, we're going to use correlated subquery. So we got to just do a couple minor things. Um, so let's comment here for number two. And again, I'm just going to copy this since we're kind of building off of it. Now, the difference here is it wants us to use a correlated subquery, which means that we need to connect them somehow, um, but achieve the same results. And, and this is fairly simple because all we have to do is say, because we're selecting the category from, from here, but if we look, it wants us to do a correlated subquery against category and film category. So we're going to kind of just take this film category out of here, out of this one, and we're going to build it into, into this one. So we're going to just take out this and we'll start fresh here. So from category, then we're going to left join film category. So we're going to give this one a C alias. And instead of film ID, we're going to use category ID. and then use our aliases. All right, so now this one, we could build this and, and run it by itself. So this one is still not kind of meeting our criteria, so to speak, being correlated, right? So there we go. We kind of have all of our stuff here. And if we select everything, we can see everything we're getting. <clears throat> which is basically all of our films and the categories that they're in for, for action movies. So, so this one isn't correlated yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce this back because it, it wants both. So we're going to actually pull this back over here. So we still have our join because we just need to correlate them. So, oop, and I did not want to cut that one paste it all right so now we just need to kind of say 
our our wear clause. Now, an interesting thing, because now we have film category that's kind of shared here. And and actually, technically, we can exclude this because let's let's keep it simple. So here, what we can do, because we have film F here, we have everything here. Um, and let's do F dot film ID. In. So I'm going to change this to an in clause. And what we're going to do. And actually, no, let's keep that equal. So we're film ID. It's equal to. And what we can do is say, we can just add a simple f dot, or we can say fc dot film ID is equal to f dot film ID. Now, this isn't my favorite example, um, just because it's kind of a big runaround that you could solve with joins pretty easy. But it, it does kind of get this point across. So let me run this. Let's make sure it works. Right now we're getting empty results. So we're selecting everything from film where the film ID is equal to. Select. Oh, we're selecting the wrong thing here. Because obviously we're not going to pull any results because category is not going to be equal to film. So FC dot film ID. Here we go. There we go. So we should get the same results. Um, the only difference is we're correlating this. And just to test that, we're going to take and copy this and try to run it. And you'll notice that it doesn't, it didn't work. And that is because if I can pull up my bar here. Or is it hiding? There we go. You'll notice that it says that we have an error. Um, and basically it's upset because inside of this query, we are referencing this f.film ID, which isn't defined anywhere. And that's because it's coming from our outer query. So the f.film ID we're using here is actually coming from the outside which means that it's it's correlated um, because we're using part of the outside query on the inside. So the way that kind of works, it's kind of like um, other programming languages where if you have a function, you can use things from outside if it's globally defined inside the function, but the stuff that's inside the function is isolated to itself. And that's the way these subquery works. So we can select things out of here that return so we can get stuff out of here from the return, but we couldn't use film category on the outside. But the inner query does has, have access to everything from film F. And, and so we can use it in there just like we did. So that is number two. And, and just... I kind of want to do a quick other example of this one, um, just to show you a better idea of a correlated subquery. So we have all of our customers, right? Select everything from customer. Um, let's say we just wanted to quickly um, get the spend for each customer. And like I said, I don't really like that other example because it's it's just kind of awkward. Um, but let's say we just wanted to say, hey, I just want all the customer information and how much they spent. Now, we've done this where we've got joins and we can do a group by, right? Because we, we need to put this up with the payment table. Um, and we've done that in the weeks where we've covered joins. However, the problem is, is then you have to do the group by and you could group it by everything in customer. Um, but, but maybe you just kind of want a quick and easy solve. So what we can do is we can just select everything from customer and then add a, a subquery. Um, so what I'm going to do is give customer an alias. I'm going to call it C. We're going to select everything from C dot there. And then I'm just going to say select the sum of amount from payment where 
customer ID is equal to C dot customer ID as total spend. Right. So there's my there's my subquery. Let's let's give it a whirl, see what happens. And there we go. So we can see our total spend here. And again, this is correlated because we're using this C dot customer ID. Because really all I'm doing is I'm selecting the sum from payment where customer ID is equal to whatever. So this subquery is going to run for every record in this table. It's basically saying, oh, Mary Smith, let me go add up your spend, plug it in. Patricia Johnson, let me go add up your spend, plug it in. So this isn't very efficient because it's going to run this query for as many customers as we have, um, which is not efficient. Subqueries are usually not very efficient. Um, especially when we use them in the select clause because it's going to run um, every time. But for quick stuff like this, it's it's pretty handy. Does that make sense to everybody? Correlated? Difference between correlated and non-correlated? Anyone fuzzy on that? All right, getting a thumbs up. We're going to roll with it. All right. Um, okay, this is a fun one. I really like this one. So this one says, join the following query to a subquery against film actor table to show the level of each actor. Um, so basically what this is doing is this is going to let us kind of put arbitrary levels against our actors. So if we take a look at this, um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit just to kind of appease my nerves here. And as I do this, I'll try to explain a little bit. So basically what this is doing is it's building a query and it looks like it has a typo in it. Um, that is going to allow us to kind of fabricate some data. Um, and data fabrication is kind of where we build data using the database that doesn't actually exist. Um, so you can imagine if we were to kind of group our actors into various um, kind of buckets based on how many films they've been in. That's essentially what we're doing. So if I were to, to run this, it's going to kind of produce this. And you can kind of imagine this as its own table. So a newcomer is in one to 19 roles. A prolific actor has 20 to 29 roles. And a Hollywood star has been in 30 to, you know, an absurd number of roles, um, basically a number that's that's large enough that we we don't we know it'll never be exceeded. So so you can kind of imagine this as its own table, and, and this kind of practice is really handy if you want to test something before you kind of put it locked in, so to speak, um, because or, or if you want something kind of more dynamic, meaning like calculated it analytic time instead of actually built into the table. Um, and so that's kind of what we're doing is, is so here's our, our levels and how many roles they need. And this, this query kind of gets it for us. And, and what we need to do now is we need to, um, we need to build a query to, that's going to subquery against this, um, to show each level of the actor. So, so we have our subquery already written for us, um, or sorry, we should write a subquery against the film actor table. Um, and count the number of rows for each actor. Um, so, so kind of like what we did just barely is we're going to um, f find each actor, each actor ID and count how many roles they've been in. So let's just keep kind of keep it separated for now. So there's that. And now we're going to, like I said, we're going to count each actor. So we need our actor ID and we want to count how many roles, they, how many roles they've been in. So um, in this case, I'm just going to, look at film ID, count of film ID. And I'm going to do distinct just to be extra precautious because we, if there happen to be in a movie twice, we just don't really care that much um, as roles. And we're going to select this from film actor. And we need a group by, and we're going to group by actor ID. And so now we can see our actor ID and how many roles they've been in. Um, 
And so based on now that we have the two pieces, so we have the stuff that tells us how we're going to bend them up. And we also have our raw counts. So each actor and how many roles they've been in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our queries and basically join them together. So let's take a look at the instructions here. So join the following query to a subquery against the film actor table. So we're going to join it. So we have all this data and we need to join it up. So we're going to say join um, or left join. Now, the interesting thing is, is because we're, the, because this is all a union together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make this a subquery too. Um, so this may be a little bit of a, a cheat, but we're going to roll with it. So I'm going to select everything from, and I'm actually going to embed this whole thing in, in its own query. So let's put this here. So there's our roles. And I'm actually going to give this a name and I'm going to call this uh, levels. Now I'm going to take our other query and I'm going to say, we're going to left join to it. And we're going to, again, do our subquery. So put it in parentheses. And this is kind of how I like to format it. So, so now we have um, our first query, which is all of our levels. And then we have our actor counts. And I'm just going to call this AC for actor counts. Um, and this is our alias, just like what we did when, you know, when we selected um, from customer C, you know, from customer C, from, instead of selecting from a table, we're selecting from a query and we're going to call it levels. So we do our left join. And then this is where we need to do our on clause. And this is where we're going to set the, the limits here. So we're going to say on, and we're going to say where the, because we have one called levels, where the AC dot roles is greater than, and really we could say between. Actually, I don't know if between works. Let's try it between in the on clause. So we're going to say on AC roles between levels dot in roles and levels dot max roles. All right. And we're selecting everything from here. So what we'll get is our level, the min max, the actor ID, and the count. So this is actually everything we need to kind of QA this. Let's see if it works. And there we go. We got it. So let's let's do a quick QA. Uh, make sure we're getting it. So this person's a Hollywood star because the actor 198, they've been in 40 roles. And yes, that's between 30 and 99,000 or basically just shy of 10,000 um, or 100,000. So they are a Hollywood star. Let's scroll down, see if we can find a prolific actor. 27, yep, between 20 and 29. Um, a newcomer, this person barely is missing the cutoff you know, one more film and they've been in there. So, so yeah, it looks like we're getting it. So we have all of our actors and what level they're in. Any questions on this one? So this one's using this, the sub queries as tables and we're joining two queries together, which is um, pretty handy. All right. Okay, so this one says rewrite the following query with two subqueries into multi-column subquery. And again, multi-column subquery meaning we're selecting more of like a table rather than a, a, a single value. The subquery should be used should use a filtered cross join between the film and actor tables um, and get the following. So let's kind of like decode what this is doing right now. So we're getting the actor ID, the film ID um, from film actor, and we're getting where the actor is. So basically we're getting the actor Monroe last name Monroe 
it looks like we have two Monroes and all the PG movies. So basically we're getting all, this is a roundabout way of getting all of the actors whose name is last name is Monroe and all the films they've been in that are PG. And let's make sure we're right here. Um, select from. And actually, oh yes. And okay. Yep. So, so all the Monroe's that have been in, in a PG movie. Um, and, and basically we're going to use a multi-column subquery and cross join between them. Um, Cause we're going to use two subqueries. Rewrite the following with two subqueries. Oh, got it. Okay. So this has two subqueries. We're going to write it into one multi-column subquery. And the subquery should use a filtered cross join between film and actor tables. So it is currently using two, two subqueries. We're going to turn it into one. So let's do that. And this is going to be very similar to the, the previous solution in the sense that we're going to kind of build it out the same way. And it looks like I didn't get that copied. All right, so this is this is our initial step here. And we want to turn this into two. So ultimately, like I said, what we're doing is we're getting all of the records where Monroe has been in a PG film. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, now, the quick and easy way to do this is you could um, you could do this with joins, right? And and that's typically the case with with subqueries is most of the time, if you're doing things right, you should use joins, but we're learning about subqueries. So that's what we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> so let's start, let's start by getting our actors who are, are Monroe. I think that's a good place to start. So I'm going to select actor ID from actor where last name is equal to Monroe. All right, let's take a look here. And there we are. So our, there's our, our two actors. Now, this one specifically calls for a filtered cross join. Um, so we have our all of our actors. And so we want a multi-column subquery because we're going to select more than one thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to cross join this um with film so i'm going to say from actor a cross join film f now i'm going to leave this just how it is where we have the actor id and the film cross joined and what's going to happen is we're going to take our two actors whose last name is monroe and we're going to duplicate it across all of our films just like just like that. So again, a filter cross join. If you remember back to when we did joins, even when we do a normal join with the old ANSI 89 syntax, is we really generate every possible outcome and then filter it just down to the matches. And that's essentially what we're going to do here. It's just a fancy way of saying that. So we're going to say where last name is equal to Monroe and F dot rating is equal to PG. So we can kind of get both of these essentially using what used to be two pieces of logic into one by doing a filtered cross join. And so now we have our actor, but it's duplicated still because every actor is in every film kind of a thing. So let's take a look here. between film and actor tables and yes, because they shouldn't be in the same movie. Right. 
So now we have all of our all of our film and actor tables. So now we're missing kind of like the the last bit here. So this is this is very duplicative as you can see. And in fact, let's make this our multi-column um, subquery and add in the film ID. And I think this will help us see what's going on here. So you can see here that basically we have all the Monroes and all the films but it's showing that both these people have been in every PG movie. And so, which is great. Um, like I said, this is, this is the first step because we have every, every actor who's Monroe and every film that's rated PG. So we've kind of done our pre-filtering. So now the last step is that we just need to combine this with film actor. And that's where it becomes a subquery because we're selecting everything from film actor and actually, I think it's just the actor ID and actor ID and film ID from film actor where actor ID is equal to actor ID or is equal to this. Now, we can't necessarily do this because we're returning more than one column, right? So this is where um, a handy little thing kind of exists. So let's go take a look here real quick. If you remember back to our week three filtering, um, there is something called where exists. Give it a second to load. And what's nice about this is exists lets us check for more than one thing, essentially. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to do is so instead of saying, oh, actor ID is, is equal to this, we're just going to say where exists. And I think we need to specify one more thing here. So let's see, because we want all the actors, basically we want to narrow down to here. So select actor ID, film ID from actor. Sorry, let me just back up. I got myself wrapped in a circle here. So there's all of our film actors. And we only want the ones that exist within our subquery and match. So that means we need to, from film actor. Now, one way we could do this, I'm just thinking out loud here, is we can say where actor ID is equal to, and we could select just the actor ID, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So what we need to do is we need to look at how we can filter based on our subqueries. And I believe it's in here. That's going to help. Oh, no, no. D 
Jeez, I'm not quite sure why it's going so slow right now. Are you guys able to hear me okay still? It's kind of choppy, but yeah. Okay, maybe I'm having some issues right now. Take a look. Non correlated in, not in. Don't you want a where the actor ID and film ID are in that select statement? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Because we want to kind of put these two together. Sorry, and I think my internet's fixed now. So we want to put these two together. And so when we because normally if we were going to just do an equal sign, we would need to duplicate that subquery just like they did. But we want to put these together. So what we can do is we can essentially build kind of our our own little grouping here and say where it's in it. Now, film actor already has like the real because we know from our subquery that we kind of produced every possible result, so to speak. And film actor already has kind of the set films and, and actors that we know are real. So we didn't fabricate anything there like we did the subquery. But essentially, we're kind of cheating doing joins by building every possible combination of the two. And then it sort of filters it out in here. So if we were to run this, we end up with that result set. Because as long as the combination of film and actor ID in film actor match something in here, then we know that it's a Monroe and it's a PG. And inside of our subquery, we had a couple of not real film actor combinations. But when we say, oh, as long as they exist between the two, then, then we know we're golden. So that's kind of how we get down to here. All right, that is question four. And then question five, rewrite the following query with two subqueries into one with two correlated subqueries. So, and, and it says both of the subqueries should return null values. So essentially we want the same result, but in this case, what's interesting is we want it to return null values, meaning like, you know, it won't return anything. Um, which is which is really interesting. So is that just meaning because when you run a correlated uh, subquery on its own, it doesn't return anything? So it's basically just redundant. Is that what that's saying? Because that was very confusing. Yes, and this one is this one is very confusing. Um, and so actually, what it means is it actually wants these two um, to return null um, because. If it was correlated, even if we ran it by itself, it's it's actually going to fail and not even return null. So, so what it actually wants it to do is is we can actually just tell it to say select null from actor ID. So this one's kind of a weird one. I again I don't really like don't really like these examples a whole lot. Um, but essentially, it wants it to return null and get the same results that so what we can do is and, and again this is kind of um a little bit of a i don't know this one's more of like a what i would consider a brain teaser because i i just do not understand why you would ever do this <laughs> um but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to just change these to be correlated and and force them to return null um 
and we can actually say, you know, select null from this where this equals this. And there's there's a little trick to this one. Um, but again, I don't really like this one. So I'm gonna, I'm actually going to leave this one to you guys because um, I don't want to do them all. And I realize that we're on five of five. Um, so I'm going to leave this one. And um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell uh, when we grade these, what we'll do is we're going to basically, as long as you attempt it, we'll give it to you. Um, but I'd like you to make an honest attempt because it, it is kind of a fun challenge, so to speak. Um, just to kind of think about it because it, basically it's going to return null and, and really to make something correlated um, is, is kind of just like an extra step if you think about it. So to just think about ways that, oh, I can have an empty result set um and and still achieve what i want essentially and and a good way to kind of go about it is if you think about it we've kind of like as it's currently written these kind of find your filters for you so you can almost use like not in to kind of like get around it if that makes sense um and and again just get creative with it um but yeah they should they should return null correlated in the sense that uh they just have to be connected so it may not stay exactly in this format but um you can just select null from something where this is equal to this if that makes sense and because they're correlated remember you can do a lot more things um to say like where actor last name does not equal this and uh actor id is equal to fa dot actor id so you know you can you get creative with it to connect them um and then return certain things essentially um but ultimately um it's going to be null um that you return um and you may want to look for this is where that exists comes into play. So you may want to you may want to use that exists um, or not exists um, as kind of a hint, I believe is what I would kind of recommend. All right. Um, but yeah, I know there's a couple questions on the quiz. Um, I'm going to take a look through those. Um, there may be one bad question, but we can, we can go and fix those, but, but this should kind of help you along with the exercise and should help you greatly. Um, so, so, so yeah, if you want to take your time with question five and, and kind of try a few things, um, just, just remember, go, go back and check out, um, some of the, the stuff from, um, and, and actually they duplicate it here. So this exists. Um, this is a exists and not exists. Make sure you check this out. Um, so you can kind of, um, it, sh it should give you ideas. So play around with exists, not exists. Um, the all, um, that kind of stuff. See if you can get something to work. Um, but yeah, I think that is all. Can you show an example with the common table expressions? Because every time I'm trying to do them, it's not recognizing the tables. Common table expressions. I think it's at the bottom. Right there. Um, so I, uh, using this and the book example, it it tells me that they don't exist every time. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, so these are, so basically you can define a table. It's almost like instead of having like a sub query, you can almost define it ahead of time. So like back to our, oh, and this is being super buggy today. Um, back to our example with the levels. Um, so like, for example, if we were to take this, I could say 
with, put in my subquery here, and essentially give it a, I almost think about it like you're building a view, um, but it's it's temporary, so you don't have to worry about dropping it. Because um, we could build this as a view, but we we kind of say with, you know, this as with the name of the view, the view, and again, I call them views, um, as we can give it a name. So with um, levels as, and then we can, and then from here we can um, write our query as usual, select, um, so let's just uh, group this up. Select everything from Something like that. So essentially we end up with the same result, but the only difference is, is we don't have to define, you basically define the, the subquery in alias up top um, instead of where it is. So, so I think some people like this because it's like you do your definition above and then, then when they get down here, the query looks as if it were without subquery, so to speak if that makes sense. Right, could... so I get the concept, but when I try to run this, like every time I get table tequila.actors underscore S underscore PG space SPG doesn't exist. So I like the concepts there, but if I can't run it, I can't <laughs> practice with it. So why is it doing that? Mm, with selectors. So it's the actors underscore S underscore PG. Uh, yeah, let me try one with commas here and see if it works for two. With levels as roles as yeah, it doesn't like that. Oh, because this, there we go. works oh, let's try let's try cleaning this up Yeah, it looks like that's working for me. All right. Well, that's the same thing I did. I just copied it and just got rid of all the arrows and it's not. So I don't know what my problem is, but it does work for you. So lucky you. If you want to send me 
if you want to send me the error and your code so if you wanted to actually copy right. your code paste it to it's, me it says error 1146 um yeah if you want to copy your code to me um i can run it here and see if it works okay well like i said i did the exact same thing but here i'll put it in the chat right now um i can find it it does not take a lot for it to break no and usually if i have a problem in workbench it works fine um in the command line but this one i even went out and typed it all by hand in case it was something in the copy and paste and it still gives me the exact same error yeah there's something different here And sometimes there is problems with copy. The copy and paste, yep. yeah, generally. Which is why I typed it all out bond as well, just to make sure, but it's it was the same error, so. Yeah, there's definitely something different because that one worked. Uh, yes, obviously it doesn't work. There's something, I bet you it's this common right here. Nope. Select. SPG, act, what does it say? Actors SPG. Actors SPG. As select, yes. Select. PG revenue. PG rev. Okay, and that's what we're calling it. Oh, so it's in this one because it's saying this doesn't exist, but it's in here. All right, so we're just gonna break this down here. Yep, that works. And it is, wait a minute, what did we? Okay. In the culprit, I'm 
some actors ass in her join. There we go. There was a broken character somewhere in there. We do this. Try it again. Select everything from actors as PG. Okay, so that's working to there. Select everything from actors. Actors, SPG, working there. My guess is that it's something to do. Okay. Actors SPG. SPG. So for some reason, it does not like that line. Unknown column. Oh, unknown column. SPG dot. Aha. Is that what it was? A look. Yes. So in your actors SPG underscore revenue, SPG dot last name is missing an A. Got it. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Yeah. Like I said, those are kind of tricky because you're building them as isolated pieces. My SQL error codes are always the worst. <laughs> so, um, yeah, basically the only way to troubleshoot, like if the error code isn't really indicative but when it's something complex like this, you almost have to like break it right. piece by piece. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, um, I'm going to call it there for, for this week. If, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, otherwise, have a great week and good luck with number five. Um, if you have any concerns, feel free to ping me, but otherwise, thanks for being here. Thank you. Yep. Thanks.